Let's design a way that I can store this under my desk. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about a small precision model to help me with a little problem. I have my HOTA system, which I use for Elite Dangerous, but I have nowhere to store it. I plan to change that by designing something to let me hang this under my desk. So I'm here for the future, just to let you know, it looks a little like this, what we will be designing. And there's a little hole bit there, and this bit snaps into place that has a screw hole in the bottom to be able to put this under a desk to take it out and back in. So like every video of my Blender Precision in Action playlist, all the dimensions that you need to go and try and do this yourself first are down in the description. So go ahead, if you're trying to learn, get those, try and model it yourself, and if you struggle or not sure how to tackle it, then come back here and you'll see the way that I've tackled it. Once again, remember that there's many ways of doing the same thing to get to the same outcome in Blender. So this is the way that I've done it. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna delete this cube and make a cube. So we're gonna go with this cube and I'm gonna make the cube 49 millimeters. Now the reason why is because on the dimensions, you can see that my HOTA system, the clip that we'll be making for it, is 49 millimeters high, which is the HOTA itself, the joystick. So let's go ahead and create the reference of the joystick to then be able to make the clip around that. So with that in place, now let's go ahead and put in a cylinder two. So that cylinder is gonna put 64, the radius of this cylinder is going to be 2.75, 2.75. And then the depth of it, I'm gonna put in 50. Okay, so from there, we also need a cone for the top bit of this cylinder thing. Um, so let's go cone, vertices, let's go 64 once again. Radius one, this one's only gonna be 2.5. And then this bottom one here, this one's going to be five. And the depth that we're working with here is two. So that's in perfect place there. Let's go G, Z, bring this up so we can take a look at what we've just made here. Fantastic. I'm gonna now use CAD transforms to put it down into place. Um, so I'm gonna go CAD transforms, G, face centers. So from this face center on the Z down to the face center of this, go into edit mode, select this face here and extrude that up. The reason why I'm gonna do that is just to be able to play about with this once I do the bool operation. Now let's go and do that. So we're gonna shift select, go control minus. You'll see that the bool did not go well, but the reason why is because we're intersecting perfect edges with planes. So let's go. G, Z, and then we go 0.00, .00. oops, I've got to make sure that I am actually doing something here. So select this, come on, G, Z, 0.001, and let's go 110, because I know it will still work with that, so we can see the precision we can get. And let's go ahead and bool this hole as well. So let's go ahead and select these two here, and let's move them over to this edge over there. I'm gonna use CAD transforms here. So going with that, we're gonna go from G on the origin point of this spot here, constrain that on the Z, and I wanna go, see, can I use vertices here? Uh, it looks like vertices are gonna be a bit of a pain. So let's go for an edge here. Uh, that edge right there, that's where I want to go. Yeah, okay, now with that done, let's go and place this hole. So G on the X, we are gonna go 15.75. And we're gonna flip that round so it goes the other way. Fantastic, and let's do that once again, G, Y, 
15.75. I could have done that as a stacked transform, but I wanted to do each movement separately. So that there is basically the fundamentals to go ahead and model something with this. So with the very basic shape now sorted out, let's go ahead and start creating this clip. So I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna take these faces here and then I'm gonna go Shift D, right click, P to part it from selection. And now if I go out of edit mode, I can click this cube, hit H to hide it. And now we have this shape here. So using this shape, I'm going to remove the ball operations from it because I do not need it. I'm gonna go back to this cube here, go F2 and put this as ref. I'm going to select this one here and rename this to clip just so we get our naming conventions sorted right now. So let's go ahead. I also want to bring this in a bit. So let's do that first edit. So let's go edges, select these edges here. I'm gonna go with a G on the Y and let's bring this in, what, 15? 15 millimeters inwards. And let's do the same with this one here. Grab those, G, and this is on the X, 15 millimeters inwards, fantastic. So with that there, now let's go ahead and use this object to create an offset for the gap. So you'll see what I mean here in a moment. So I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna go add a modifier, a solidify, and I'm gonna give this a 0 0.5 millimeters. Instead of inwards, we're gonna go outwards. And I want its even thickness and high quality normals. So this now has a 0 0.5 millimeter thickness. So that there is going to be the gap that I have between my clip and my reference. So I'm gonna apply this down. And the reason why I'm applying it down is gonna I'm redoing exactly what I just did. So I'm gonna go ahead and do face selection, select all of these. Then I'm gonna go shift D, right click. And then we're gonna go P for parting it, the selection. So now with that done, we have here, this is our spacer. So let's go ahead and put that in, spacer because we no longer need it. So let's go ahead and hide it. So that's the spacer hidden. Now we have what's going to be the actual clip itself. So with this clip here, let's go and first give it some thickness. So let's go once again, use the solidify. And the thickness I'm wanting to start with here is three millimeters. And I want it to go outwards. I want it even thickness with high quality normals. And I'm going to straight away apply this because I know that this is what I'm wanting. Okay, with that done, I'm not happy with how the thickness is up here because I'm gonna have a little bulge here. And this bulge needs to have a little bit of leeway and three millimeters of material isn't gonna let that happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and go G on the Z and I'm gonna go minus 1.8. So this now is, I think, 1.2 millimeters. Let's use our measurement tool here. Make sure that we are on snapping of vertices. And let's see, yeah, 1.2. That's exactly what I'm wanting. Fantastic. So with that now in place, let's go ahead and reuse this here. So let's go ahead, click those, Shift D, right click. Then let's go Z. Oh, sorry, G, Z, bring this down. Now the reason why is we're gonna be using this, what we just created for the other one, for this one. So let's go ahead and shift click here, control minus, and the same here, shift click, control minus. And now we can bring these both further down so that it's more along the lines of what we're wanting. So right around there works for me. Fantastic. We could have gone a little bit more precise, but all this really is, is as you know, we're just trying to get a, the screw doesn't scrape on our joystick. So with that there, we're well on our way. Now there is one more modification I wanted to do. I'm not too happy with only 
0.5 of a distance going on on my side walls. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do select this one. I'm going to go on the Y. I'm going to go G. Oops, I accidentally deselected that one. There we go. Sorry. Let's go here. G. Move this on the Y. And I'm wanting to go 0 0.5, but the other direction. So this is only going to be 2.5 millimeters. Let's do that to the other face as well. G, X, 0 0.5, and that's it in, done on that direction. Fantastic. So we really do have the fundamentals of our shape going on here. Let me just double, double check that I just did this one correctly. I did. Fantastic. And redo that. And now all that's really left is to add some bevels to these corners cut away some excess material so our print time from something ridiculous of like two and a half hours or maybe even three hours goes down to only an hour. So let's go and do that. First, let's go and create our little bump. So let's go and add a UV sphere here. I'm going to leave this, actually no, I'm going to put this up to 64 segments. So it's a nice smooth ball and the radius we're going to go with is Five, because that is the radius of this little hole here that we have on our reference object. Let's go ahead and now edit up this circle a little bit more. So let's go into edit mode. I'm going to go into vertex selection, select from the top, and I'm going to do my numpad plus here. So let's increase that all the way up to the point where we almost get to the equator, so to speak. And now let's delete all these vertices. Edge select, select this rim here, go F, go into face selection. And now let's grab this face and extrude it upwards, let's say 0 0.5 millimeters. Fantastic. So now with that in place, we need to make sure that this is centered up with that. For that, once again, I'm going to be using my CAD transform. So I'm going to go and select this little bulb here. Let's turn on CAD transforms, go G. Let's go from the origin point because when it was created, that was right in the center. And now let's go and place it right on that origin over on the cylinder or the cone. And now we're going to be using that once again to use that origin point. So G, origin point, constrain it on the Z this time, and to this face right here. Fantastic. So that's now in place, so to speak. But now we've got to go ahead and just make this bump a little less bumpy because there is no way the HOTAS is going to fit into that. Now to do this next bit, what we're going to do is we're going to go and select this Boolean. And because you can't see the Boolean currently, we're actually going to go and change the way it's seen. Right here in Object Properties, you can go to viewport display and instead of bounds, turn it to wire. So this way we have a wireframe view when we go into edit mode. So let's go ahead and select this here. Let's go into edit mode with it. Let's go and select just this vertex because I want to show you something pretty cool here. I'm going to press three on my numpad and go into X-ray. So Alt Z and this way we get to view what we're going to be editing. Now something that I haven't showed in any of my videos yet is this something called proportional editing. It's a really interesting organic way of working with models and I'll show you it right now. So you turn it on here and I'm going to turn this into the sphere and with that sphere you're going to see now what happens. When I hit G and Z when I move this up and down, you can see that more than just one vertex is moving here. That's because this sphere that I have around, you might not be able to see it too well. This is like the sphere of influence that this has. So I can use my scroll to scroll it bigger and smaller. And I'm going to go quite big here because what I'm wanting to do is I can see here that on my Boolean, that's a little bit too much going on. So I'm going to just go and place this probably somewhere around 
there, click that in, then I'm going to go G, Z once again, because I don't want this to be such a peak, because that's probably going to scratch my HOTA. So I'm just going to bring the peak of this down by just doing multiples of this operation to just bring this flatter and flatter and flatter till I'm happy with the end result. And to be honest, right about there, I'm happy with that result. So let's go out of edit mode now. Let's go around, turn off x-ray and just take this, give this a good little view now of what's going on. This looks like it's definitely something that I want to work with. That looks good to me. So I'm going to grab that ball once again, turn it back to bounds. And that is my little bump in place. Fantastic. So now that we have this bump, let's go ahead and union it to our object. So shift click, control plus, and that's it now being unioned. Let's just quickly check within the model. So it hasn't had a successful union though. So let's go to just G, Z, and make sure that I'm not in my CAD transform. So W, grab this one again, G, Z, and there we go. So I just had to move it up a little bit. Once again, I want this to be a very small movement. So I'm not going to put in 0 0.0001. And as you see, that has now made it a successful union. So let's go ahead and add these bevels. These bevels, I'm actually going to bake them straight in. And I'm going to go and put that into edit mode, go into edge selection. Let's select these two edges here. We've got to keep in mind that there is a hole right there. So not beveling it too much. So with that bevel there, let's go ahead and now use the rest of it being quite precise. I want this to be 25 segments of bevels. And let's see, is 30 too much? 30 is right on the verge of too much. So what about we go with 25? 25? I really want to go 30, but I feel like 30 might be a, a bit too much for might be too close. You know what? We can always undo. So let's go out of here and see. No, that's going to be fine. We're only holding a pla plastic joystick, so that will be able to hold the weight. I'm just thinking of the forces with the screw there, but that's going to be fine. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the excess material. Now, to remove the excess material, I really want to use what I already have here. So let's go into edit mode. Let's go into face selection and select these two faces. I'm going to go Shift D, right click, P, and part the selection. So now we have a new object of just these faces. Now, the reason why is I'm going to be using these to create my cutting object. So I'm going to go back into edit mode, I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to go I for insetting by three millimeters. And you can see what's happened here. Because I did them both together, it's inserted them as one object. I'm not wanting that. So let's go back and let's go and do our insets individually. So select one, go I, go three millimeters. Select the other one, go I, go three millimeters. Fantastic. Now I'm not wanting these edges, so I'm going to do an alt click, an alt shift click, and just delete these faces. I'm going to then select these two faces here. We're going to scroll out a little bit, see what's going on, and then I'm going to get alt E, and we're going to extrude face along normals. And this will let us do this right here. Fantastic. Now I'm also going to quickly grab these right here, and I'm going to do another extrude face along normal so that it comes out as well. So I don't have to move these later on. So with that done, I think we should just quickly check what's going on with our normal. So let's go ahead. Let's go face orientation. Ah, all right. So we've got to fix our ball objects before we go ahead and do anything else. So let's go and do that. So taking these into edit mode, let's go shift N and there we go. Our normals have now been fixed. So let's go ahead and let's cut away. So let's 
shift and click. Let's go control minus, and this has been cut away. Now, we are having a problem with this one here, but that's because we have that exact placement of our faces. So let's go ahead, let's undo, and let's go to this point here, and let's just quickly go into this object and go into edge selection, select this edge loop and dissolve these edges because those are the edges that are giving us our problem here. So because they're perfectly intersecting with our face. So now with those done, let's select that control minus once again, and you'll see that we no longer have that problem. So that was fundamentally the reason that we had a problem. You can see that because we also copied this from our original object, you keep seeing this being selected. This is because we still have modifiers in here. So you can see that I have this little shelf here that is the an add-on called, let me just double check the add-on name for you. I know it's called modifier, modifier tools. So I like modifier tools because it lets me just go delete all and I don't have to worry about that. And now you see it's no longer selected up there. So with that done, I do want to add one more modifier in here. And I'm going to be using a bevel modifier on the cutting tool. And do an offset of five millimeters. And let's give this a good 15 segments. And as you see, we practically have our clip right here. So this is quite a thing of personal taste now. You can go ahead and select the clip itself and apply all these booleans. You can go and change things as you wish for whatever you're wanting. But what I'm gonna do here is show you that very much so without anything else, we can go ahead and just export this. But before we do that, as always, do a quick check to face orientation. Brilliant, now let's go ahead into the 3D print toolbox. Now this is a great add-on because it will let you check everything. And as you see, we have zero issues, which means that when we put this into a 3D printer, it's going to look exactly how it should. So let's go ahead with this object already selected, double checking that our scale is at zero as well. So. With all that done, let's go ahead and export this STL. So let's go ahead and drop the clip in. And as we can see right here, we are looking good, looking very good indeed, no problem at all. So let's just quickly reorientate this and double check that it works perfectly fine. So I think it's gonna be minus 90. Yep, let's recenter that. And you can see that's it in place. I already have my print procedures all set. So let's go and print this. And here it is. It looks like it's going to come out just as intended. So let's go down here, double check that it's all looking good. It is indeed. So let's get a couple of these printed and I'll show you the final result in place and in action. So here we have it, the final design printed out. It's come out really well, and what's really nice is because this is such a nice thin wall, it is quite flexible. So it's very easy for it to be able to just clip right in and clip right out. So I also had to go about and create one other little variation, which is this right here. It's pretty much exactly the same as this one, just with a ball operation to cut away that little support. As well as that, I've thickened up the bottom so that it just has a little bit more strength for the weight, not that it's gonna be holding a lot of weight. And the reason why is because when we've got this and we're sliding it into position, yes, it's gonna slide perfectly to there. But if I had another one that was like this, there would be no way to allow me to slide into that slot. So I've had to create one that doesn't have that because on this side, we have the exact same thing, which will let us to slide in to let clips right into place there. So it's going to be supported there and there. With that said, let's go and install it. It's 
great to finally have a place to put those away. I really hope that this mini design challenge got you to use your new Blender skills and really start to get into the workflow and the mindset of what Blender precision modeling is like. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome and it means the world to me. And if you think I'm worthy of your support, I'd love to see you there too. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.